I don't know if I should do it in English or in French. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Bashir Jalu, and I'm tasked to present you what the FDB, FDB is doing in, uh, in the health sector, particularly the pharmaceutical and um, vaccination area. Um, the presentation maybe is a bit different from uh, the topic of this session because uh, uh, I understand later that uh, it was particularly on the co-financing of uh, vaccination. But the presentation that was sent from the headquarters was uh, mostly focusing or on the pharmaceutical per se, the manufacturing and the, the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical manufacturing sector. So I will try to quickly just present that and then uh, We'll try to readdress <laughs> my topic towards uh, the topic of this uh, session. So quickly, um, the bank is uh, quite new in the area of uh, supporting vaccination manufacturing in Africa. Uh, in the past, our interventions are more uh, infrastructures and uh, roads and so on. And in the health sector is uh, mostly uh, geared towards uh, building health infrastructures like hospitals and so on. So we are quite new in the vaccine area, per se. And uh, since 2020, after the COVID uh, crisis, we have uh, developed uh, what you are calling the Pharma Action Plan. And uh, it has uh, four enablers. And the goal is uh, supporting vaccination, va vaccine manufacturing in the continent with up to over 100 million uh, US dollars. So, as you know, since uh, the, uh, the arrival of our, our current president, uh, for the last 10 years, we have uh, what we are calling our high fives. So all our interventions are, are uh, around these high pillars. The first one is the Light Up Africa. The second is Feed Africa. The third one is industrialized Africa. The four is uh, integrate Africa. And uh, the last one is improve the quality of Africa. So in this particular area, we are concentrating now in the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical and vaccination area on, this, on the third pillar, which is the industrialized Africa. So I won't go through because uh, I think the time is, uh, is quite uh, small. So the rationale for this uh, Intervention is to focus on uh, our goal in this particular area, area is to play a leading, a leading role in, uh, develop in, the, in the development of uh, Africa. We want to support uh, global trade integration uh, around va regional valuations. We want to grow co-financing, and we will discuss uh, maybe later on, on this session. And uh, we are trying to attract private sector uh, uh, financing. And also, we want to foster the emergency of uh, the emergence of uh, regional champions, and uh, we want to create uh, sustainable jobs and uh, increase the productivity and incomes. Uh, I will skip this one um, because uh, it has no. So the rationale of our new strategy is to the COVID pandemic has exposed the fragility of uh, our health systems. And uh, we highlight, it highlights the necessity of African countries to ensure at least a minimum level of security of supply of health, of health products, especially the vaccines. So more and more governments in Africa are now pushing the bank to think into of developing local pharmaceutical uh, sectors in Africa, and uh, mostly to to supply uh, medicines and vaccines, and uh, so that we, we we are able to face uh, the future crisis. So the development of the African uh, pharmaceutical industry is uh, limited by structural uh, challenges, such as small and fragmented markets. Logis logistical constraints, tariff and non-tariff barriers, and uh, limited uh, knowledge. African production in this area falls very short of local demand, and on average, 
the the production is meeting only 30 to 40 percent of the demand uh, in Africa. So the objective of, of, of our study is to of our new strategy is to define an action plan to support the development of this Africa pharmaceutical uh, industry. So first, we want to provide a clear diagnosis of the current Africa, African pharmaceutical market in terms of maturity, as well as size and overview of the supply and demand dynamics. Second, we want to set an ambition for the African continent in terms of local production by 2030. Then we want to define the African Development Bank's vision, our model of intervention around clusters, and to support the development of a robust local pharmaceutical industry. Then, last but not least, we want to structure our industrial policy in a support and investment roadmap, uh, which will be composed of uh, strategic initiative and quick wins, example of project and communication plan. So in this study, we first start with a diagnostic, then a, a strategic approach, then how you are going to implement the strategy. Under the diagnostic, we want to understand the current setting of the pharmaceutical industry. What is the demand and the supply? How are products that, uh, distributed? How do we attract foreign, yes, foreign inv investment in the, in, 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 uh, on the continent? What are the regulations, quality and standards, etc.? Then we want to benchmark, support, intervention, and financing instrument. So what, what we have so far and what can we do with, with it? And uh, what other multilateral banks are doing in the sector? So what is the financing of this uh, pharmaceutical, the current city? Then we want to clarify the possible models of interventions and financing instruments that the banks, the Af African Development Banks has currently. Then we will analyze the the countries how it you know what is the 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 production how is it is it clustered and etc under the strategic approach we want to define the admission of the africa local production pharmaceutical production we want to clarify our our bank's vision and approach and we are going to develop a five years action plan then the third pillar, which is uh, the implementation, we will uh, define a roadmap for the next five years. Then we will have, un under each roadmap, we'll have flagship uh, programs, which will cover each aspect. And then we will define what are the financial needs and opportunities. And then we will have an action plan on how we are going to develop this uh, African pharmaceutical industry. Globally, I will quickly give some key facts of the global pharmaceutical industry. 30% uh, of margin, uh, up to 50% 50, 50 of uh, cost of goods sold. It takes around 10 to 15 years to develop uh, a prod product uh, success successfully from the research and development development to the, 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 the cells. 60% of the market are polarized around the US and the Europe. We have a 3.5% of the, uh, the growth rate of uh, generic product, et cetera, and et cetera. So this is an industry with high margins uh, globally, but which depends of you know, high economics of, economy of, of scales. And this is a market very risky. The total market amounts to 1,200 billion of US dollars. And as, as I say, it is polarized al around the US and the, and the EU. The generic market is uh, characterized by fragmentations, uh, diverse product mix and growth coming from emerging markets like India. In Africa, which is the next slide, uh, figures are uh, like this. I said previously that uh, the global market is uh, 1,200, but in Africa, the market is only of uh, 25 billion US, mark, uh, US dollars. So the mark, African market 
concentrates around three main uh, therapeutic areas. Innovation uh, is uh, very limited, and uh, the ep epidemiological, con ep epidemiological profile of the continent is moving towards a high share of non-communicable disease and injuries. Each African country spends on average $25 on the pharmaceutical, pharma pharmaceutical products, which is uh, six times lower than uh, the world average, which is uh, 160 US dollars per capita. The market is very concentrated in, uh, in, uh, very in some countries, and the growth rate of uh, generic product is only 3%. So we expect by 2030 that uh, the non-communicable non disease will uh, represent almost half of the continent's continent disease burden. So what is the current uh, diagnosis of uh, African uh, local market capacity? We have uh, in Africa limited manufacturing uh, capacity in the pharmaceutical area and it is, it's even worse in the, in the in terms of vaccine production, which is very, very small, less than 1%. African, continent, African co companies show a low level of integration, so they don't collaborate. They have uh, almost no, limit, uh, no research and development. And also the active pharmaceutical, endurance, uh, active pharmaceutical uh, ingredients are quite uh, inexistent over the continent. The local production capacity is focused mainly on uh, manufa manufacturing processes, generic and demand-driven therapeutic areas. It is not really uh, competitive when we compare to uh, the rest of the world. So we have several barriers uh, which, develop, uh, which prevent the development of uh, new, the, the, ent the, the new entering of new actors. So, as I said, only 30% of the local demand of these products are produced locally. The rest is important. We have a lot, a high of uh, concentration is uh, in less than 10 uh, countries. And uh, we produce only 2% of uh, worldwide research and development. So I won't go through all these numbers, just to let uh, people know, and maybe the PowerPoint will be distributed later. So our strategic uh, interventions are focusing on seven areas. Quickly, uh, they fit. we have five st seven strategic orientations to have a comprehensive uh, overview and diagnosis of uh, the, the pharmaceutical industry in Africa. The first one is to have a clear uh, understanding of, uh, we, we understand that there's a clear potential in Africa to develop the, this uh, industry. Uh, because as, as I said, for strategic public health and economic reason. So the, ma the margins are very high. It's, it's, it's very profitable to invest in this area. The second is mid-sized local and, and, and international pharmaceutical companies that are showing more and more interest for Africa. The third is uh, that we should concentrate on solid form of uh, generics, which should be our primary focus. And uh, the fourth area is that uh, we need to understand that the fragmented markets in Africa. The fifth is to address the logistical in in integrations of, uh, of, the, of, of this uh, industry. The sixth is the harmon harmonization of standards because uh, every country has uh, its own standards. And the seventh is uh, to address uh, the research uh, area, so that we 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 understand more what is uh, uh, what is going to to improve our, our productivity. So quickly, we resume all these seven strategic orientation under four enablers. Uh, which the first one is to increase the maturity of the industry by supporting the development of local production capacity. The second is to enable regional logistic integration. It is to implement uh, the quality of industry and the quality of standards. 
And the, the fourth is to increase research and, de and development. So quite a, a big presentation, uh, only five minutes. Okay, I think I will skip also this slide. So for us, it's to it's, it's, it's necessary to have a combination of uh, three strategic uh, strategic options. The first is uh, to have uh, an industry aiming at achieving self sufficiency self sufficiency instead of uh, importing. We, the second is to have an industry focusing on molecules, on solid molecules that match the current epidemiolog epidemiological profile. The third is to have an industry mostly anticipating the epidemiologic epidemiological transition going on in Africa. So for us is to increase uh, our interventions up to between uh, 15 million US dollars to one, 115 million billion US dollars to 120 billion. This is our very high ambition level. Our medium am, uh, ambition is to invest uh, 90 billion over the next five years. And our low target is to have uh, 60 to 65 billion US dollars in investment in this area of uh, pharmacy industry. So over 1,850 1, molecules existing, we are narrowing to only focus on 30 uh, products that we, we, we aim to support in, in Africa, which are solid form and generics. So this is already said. So maybe quickly to, as I only have uh, two minutes, what I will show is uh, the areas, the, 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 the areas. So we divide the continent on uh, four, four hubs. So we have the West African part, which is also combined to Central where we are going to support the industries mostly in uh, countries like, uh, we, we, we are targeting countries like Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Nigeria, and Senegal. On the Southern, Southern Africa region, we are going to concentrate uh, investment in South Africa. On the Eastern part, we are going to concentrate investment in, uh, China, uh, in uh, Kenya and Egypt. And in, in Africa, we are going to target countries like Tunisia, Morocco, etc. So these were are the enablers that I was talking about. I will not maybe concentrate on that. So to summarize, so as I said, the African public mark, the African uh, pub, uh, pharmacy and vaccine market is worth uh, 1.3 billion US dollars, which represents approximately 4% of global market. So currently less than 1% of African vaccines are uh, made uh, locally, and we are uh, targeting to invest in the next years in five, manufacture, manuf five uh, manufacturing plants with uh, close to 1.2 billion US dollars. We will help shape the vaccine manufacturing by leading or building each of these uh, strategic axes that I just presented. And just to end up with uh, saying that we are supporting the African Center of Disease Control uh, Partnership. We are part of it. And that we are going to invest uh, one, one hundred, one, 111 billion US dollars in the sector. Thank you very much.